On Saturday, Attorney General Merrick Garland swore in 200 new U.S. citizens on Ellis Island, the site of his own family's American origin story. Some of my family entered right here at Ellis Island. My grandmother is one of five children born in what is now Belarus. Two were killed in the Holocaust. If not for America, there is little doubt that the same would have happened to my grandmother. But this country took her in. And under the protection of our laws, she was able to live without fear of persecution. Garland's heartfelt, emotional message evoked the very words etched on the Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. While a different kind of leader waged war on that very tradition. We are not a sanctuary state, and it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction. And yes, we will help facilitate that transport for you. You are not welcome here is the gist of what Ron DeSantis is all about. It could even be a slogan for what is clearly his already active presidential campaign. His actions are callous and petty. He uses human beings fleeing violence and oppressive regimes, I guess kind of like the one he's setting up in Florida, as pawns for a cruel theatrical stunt that many are likening to kidnapping. And because American conservatism since Trump has devolved into a contest for who can be the biggest dick Keynesian jerk, right-wing America is predictably fawning over the chaos, with DeSantis receiving a standing ovation during his remarks in Kansas on Sunday. The one place in our country where we see virtually no law and order is at the southern border. And this is a crisis, it's now getting a little bit more attention, uh, this is a crisis <laughs> It is a crisis. DeSantis' overarching goal, clearly, is to change federal immigration policy, to inject it with less Statue of Liberty and more fascistic Trumpian cruelty, which he has made central to his feud with President Biden, which in turn is central to his presidential ambition. Well, that, along with his war against COVID protections, wokeness, accurate American history, and the existence of gay and trans people, and drag shows. He really hates those drag shows. And despite all of this, much of the mainstream political media has created this, this weird fiction that DeSantis is somehow a better version of Trump, the solution to shifting Trumpism into something less dangerous and more mainstream and acceptable. After all, has DeSantis ever inflamed an armed mob to uh, assault the U.S. Capitol and try to hang a vice president? Hmm? Well, not yet. The reason Junior Maga is even considered the only Republican who can beat Trump is because he's no different than Trump. He's just the smirky, unsmiling, humorless version. All the fascism, but none of the shtick. But under at least the less clownish, less orange veneer, it's all the same. The inhumane, racist political stunts, the cruelty, the xenophobic fever obsession with the border, and protecting real Americans from the replacements, and from feeling bad about history. In fact, DeSantis sending plane loads of migrants to a liberal haven is so akin to a Trump troll Donald Trump himself is reportedly big mad about it. Something else that Trump can relate to is the question of whether DeSantis could wind up in legal trouble for his political stunt. 